morning everybody I'm Noreen and welcome to my kitchen and I just wanted to touch base with everybody today um, you know it's been a busy week my my job is getting crazier and crazier as the uh, weeks roll on my boss is making a very successful attempt to run for judge and that means that not only do I have my regular work to do but I also have the job of trying to close up an office in the event that he does win um, but uh, I've also been busy with canning and dehydrating and all kinds of stuff you know we're back to school now so we're full force into projects and Halloween is coming and Thanksgiving is coming and Christmas is on its way so we're all busy uh, last night I had the distinct pleasure of being invited to be a guest on the very first episode of um, Deb of the Purbane Channel's new bro prepper broadcasting radio show, Common Sense Prepping. And I just had the loveliest time with her and um, Redbirds 1100, Doug, and Southern Bell Prepper, who were also on the show. And you know what? It was, it was like sitting around the kitchen table and just talking to your neighbors. It was such a fabulous exchange, and we really, it, you know what, I felt like I was talking to friends that I had known for absolute years. And it, it was just such a comfortable atmosphere, and it was really, really enjoyable. One of the main themes that Deb was trying to impart was helping new preppers to, to avoid the fear and that fear is a bad reason to start anything or to make any decisions out of fear. Very, It's a very poor reason to do that. Um, and just trying to get the point across that the reason that we do this is simply out of love, really, to make sure that we can take care of our own families in the event that something should happen. It doesn't have to be the end of the world. It could be absolutely anything. It could be you know, a medical problem. You know, what if what if you got sick, broke your leg, had to have an extended period of time where you couldn't go to work? You know, there are any number of reasons. You know, financial collapse in your own life. You know, lose a job. Um, someone dies, God forbid. But, you know, basically all of these problems can be solved with a little pre-planning and a lot of love and a lot of common sense. And I've been thinking about this a lot lately, especially, you know, recently I, I did a video and I shared the story of Stone Soup with you because it is something that came up in a video that in, in one of my Homestead Honey Hours and, excuse me, it's still early and I'm drinking my coffee, um, and, and how the, the story of Stone Soup really is an important um, fable, folk tale, about the importance of community. And I think it's really important for us to remember those things. I think through these stories we help to apply these ideas in our lives. And we can pass those on to our children. I mean, these things have been going down generation to generation. They've been handed down from storyteller to storyteller. And I think that they can make a really, really deep impact on someone and it's not something you think about every single day, but it is something that you think about occasionally when it just, it kind of pops into your head because it's stored back in your, in that filing cabinet in your mind. And while I say you may not refer to that file every single day, every now and then your conscience, conscience will go and retrieve that file and, and help you remember that this is what's most important. And I have another story like that for you today, something that my mind retrieved from my filing cabinet just yesterday. <clears throat> and I'm sure that most of you have heard this and maybe maybe for some of you you haven't and this will be your first time but it really is impactful. It's called the Allegory of the Long Spoons. And what the Allegory of the Long Spoons is is a parable that shows the difference between heaven and hell by means of people eating with long spoons where on the hell side they were starving and on the heaven side they were completely nourished and sated and loved 
And the story is meant to encourage people to be kind to each other. And um, there are lots of different interpretations of this fable, and people have been using it in sermons for time immemorial. Um, they also use this particular allegory as a means to help people understand its interpretation if you're reading things like, like Dante's Inferno or Faust. Um, from a literature perspective. It really does boil it down to the simplest of understanding. And I think our conversations that we had last night on Deb's radio show really kind of cemented this idea in my mind. The fact that it popped into my mind as a memory I don't think is any coincidence because I really do believe that the universe works in very mysterious ways and I think that all things are made clear to you in the end. Um, there's a reason why I recalled this story. Um, there's a reason why I was on Deb's radio show last night. And and perhaps this is the reason. It was just a little message to tell me that I needed to share this with you today. And so I'm going to share it with you right now. Um, uh, Rabbi Chaim, um, and I don't, I can't pronounce the next word, but he was um, a preacher, a, a Jewish preacher, a rabbi, and he traveled from town to town delivering religious sermons that stressed the importance of respect for one's fellow man, and he often began his talks with the following story, which is the allegory of the long spoons. And before I go into that, I did want to make this, this point clear, and this thought clear, is, you know, as preppers slash homesteaders slash whatever you want to call us, I think it's just something that we got so far away from as a society that these are all things we should have been doing in the first place, but from a generational perspective got away from because the world got very convenient. Um, everything was very accessible and very easy to get, and now perhaps we're, as a generation, looking at things that perhaps won't be so easy to get in the future, and perhaps life isn't always going to be this easy. You just never know. The shit hits the fan in everyone's life from time to time on a different level. So it's not necessarily a worldwide problem. It may just be in your own life. And how you deal with it is the most important thing. Um, if something does happen, how are you going to deal with it in your community? I live on a small cul-de-sac. There are probably eight to ten families in my immediate area. I know some of them. I don't want to know some of them. But in an emergent situation, how will you decide to deal with it? You can close off. You can hunker down and make your home into a fortress and not let anybody in and not let anybody out. And you can watch through your windows as the rest of the neighborhood either thrives or starts to crumble. It's up to you how you deal with it. If you know how to do things, I really do think it's our job to share that knowledge and that ability. And no, don't get me wrong, there are going to be people who don't want anything to do with you and, you know, may threaten your life. However, I think it's more important to approach this entire situation with a sense of community in the best way that we can choose our words very carefully and and really approach it with a deep understanding that we're all going through this together and we all are afraid in our own way but we can't do it without each other and that's pretty much what this allegory imparts so without further ado I'm gonna share it with you now this uh, is written in the first person from the perspective of someone who may have experienced it I once ascended to the firmaments. I went first to see hell, and the sight was horrifying. Row after row of tables were laden with platters of sumptuous food, yet the people seated around the tables were pale and emaciated, moaning in hunger. As I came closer, I understood their predicament. Every person held a full spoon, but both arms were splinted with wooden slats so he could not bend either elbow to bring the food to his mouth. It broke my heart to hear their tortured groans of these people as they held their food so near but could not consume it. Next I went to visit heaven. I was surprised to see the same thing I had witnessed in hell, 
row after row of long tables laden with food, but in contrast to hell, the people here in heaven were sitting contentedly talking with each other, obviously sated from their sumptuous meal. As I came closer, I was amazed to discover, to discover that here, too, each person had his arms splinted on wooden slats that prevented him from bending his elbows. How, then, did they manage to eat? As I watched, a man picked up his spoon and dug into the dish before him. Then he stretched across the table and fed the person across from him. The recipient of this kindness thanked him and returned the favor by leaning across the table to feed his benefactor. I suddenly understood heaven and hell offer the same circumstances and conditions. The critical difference is in the way the people treat each other. I ran back to hell to share the solution with the, with the poor souls trapped there. I whispered in the ear of one starving man, You do not have to go hungry. Use your spoon to feed your neighbor, and he will surely return the favor and feed you. You expect me to feed the detestable man sitting across that table? said the man angrily. I would rather starve than give him the pleasure of eating. I then understood God's wisdom in choosing who is worthy to go to heaven and who deserves to go to hell. Now, I don't know about you, but that story speaks volumes to me. You know, maybe we're not our brother's keeper. And maybe we can't do everything to help everyone. But being a mother and a parent in general, I don't know how you look at anyone who is hungry and not want to feed them. I don't know how you look at any human being who is starving and not want to help them. So I think that this is a really important story for all of us to file in the back of our mind in that filing cabinet that may become so jam-packed that we can't ever remember every single thing that's in it but from time to time our conscience lets us know that we need to go ahead and remember these stories because there is an innate importance in them whether it's the allegory of the long spoons or stone soup or the cat in the hat, or anything for that matter. Uh, yes, this makes me emotional. And I think it should make you emotional. I think in the end, how we deal with things, how we treat other people, this is going to be our ultimate judgment, if you will. We must treat each other decently. We must help each other. Because if we, you know, we can do everything possible to make sure that we have what we need. But are you helping? Are you preparing to help others in the event that something should happen? I hope that you are. And I, I want to thank Deb for inviting me on her show last night. Because it really was a lot of fun. And it really does uh, strengthen my, my hope in this community that we have here on YouTube. Uh, I've met people I never could have imagined. But if I could put you all in a little colony and we could all be together, it would be so amazing. But that's not what the universe has planned for us. The universe has scattered us about. And there's a reason for that too. Because even though we may not live next door to each other, we live where we're supposed to be, and we know what we're supposed to do when the time comes. So, I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, I, um, I will put the allegory in the underbar so that you can print it out for yourself and uh, contemplate it on your own and maybe share it with someone that you love. So, um, I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, I'll see ya.